So the first color film stock that we're gonna go over is the one that I personally use the most called Kodak Portra 400 or just Portra 400. There are a lot of plus sides to this film stock, including that it is a lot lower price point than many other film stocks. And it has a lot of versatility, which just means that you can shoot on the same roll both inside and outside without having to stop down too much. This film stock also has a really great exposure latitude, just meaning that you can overexpose it a couple stops and it still looks good. And you can also push this in post and it will look really great. Just be careful not to overexpose it too, too much, or you might get a really contrasted image, which will make it look a little bit less filmy. Another great reason that people shoot this film stock is the warmer base and the medium amount of contrast that it adds. Personally, I really love the amount of contrast this has. It's a bit more than something like Fuji 400H and I really like that it's not too warm, but it's also not very cool either. Um, I recommend trying out this film if you are looking for a bit of a cheaper option and just because it offers a lot of versatility and it's very forgiving if you underexpose just a little bit or overexpose a bit too much. So the second color film that we're going to go over is called Fuji 400H and it is a very popular film stock among wedding and portrait photographers. It has slightly less contrast, it's not quite as warm, it creates beautiful pinks and beautiful reds and some amazing pastel colors. The downside to using this film is that it creates some muddy colors if you don't overexpose it quite a bit. It needs a ton of light when you're exposing, so I don't recommend shooting this in very dark scenarios, indoors without added light sources, or outside if it's extremely overcast. Um, another downside, it's a bit more expensive than something like Portra 400. So the third color film stock we're going to go over is called Portra 800. Um, this is a really beautiful film stock, but can be a little bit trickier to shoot and a bit more finicky than the Portra 400. Um, I love the colors of this. It can create a really vintage look if you expose it close to box speed, or it can be um, have a lot more bright colors and more beautiful colors if you overexpose it more. So this film stock is another one that's really popular among wedding photographers, especially for um, beautifully lit indoor portraits. If you're shooting near a window with enough window light or even outdoor images, you can expose this um, pretty high and still get great colors. I really recommend trying out this film stock at sunset because you can get very beautiful backlit pictures without getting a really weird muddy overtone across your whole picture with this film stock. Uh, the downside is that it can be a bit of a higher price point than something like Portra 400, and it can also be a bit more finicky to shoot with if you don't expose correctly. Now that we've covered a few color film options, let's go over a few different black and white options. The first that we're gonna start with is called Tri-X 400, and this is the film stock that I recommend starting with if you are wanting to shoot black and white. It looks really great when it's overexposed, um, one to two or even three stops, um, and it's pretty forgiving with exposure. If you accidentally underexpose a little bit, you still, still should have a really good image. Um, it is one of the most popular film stocks, and it's really the go-to place where most film shooters will begin. Another amazing black and white film is called Ilford Delta 3200, or just Ilford 3200. Uh, this is a very dreamy looking film stock and create a very vintage look. Um, it has a subtle glow to it that isn't present with a lot of other film stocks. Um, although you may think this is a low light film given the 3200 ISO, I actually always overexpose um, closer to 2000 or 800, something like that. Um, so I oftentimes shoot this by window light if a bride is getting a dress on or something if there is still enough light to shoot in. Here's an example image of how I shot the bride getting ready by a really large window. And as you can see, there is a really fine but really present grain that's there and a subtle glow that's behind the bride that's really hard to recreate digitally. The last film stock that we're gonna go over is called Ilford HP5 400 or just HP5. Um, I oftentimes shoot this at receptions and in darker spaces and push it. It has beautiful tones and slightly less contrast than the Tri-X 400. So oftentimes I will shoot this if there's still enough light on the couple's face, I will push this in stop about two or three stops in development. Here's an example image of the sliding scenario. So there was still enough light on the bride and groom's face for me to get um, enough exposure, but then I did push this three stops in development. So it creates a really high contrast image that doesn't feel too harsh, and it really creates this dreamy, glowy look that um, is just beautiful and really hard to create with a digital camera. Choosing any of these high quality film stocks is really gonna help your images have some beautiful tones and some beautiful colors, especially compared to any of those off-brand cheaper film stocks that are on the market. 
when it comes to actually loading film into your film camera, every single camera is going to be slightly different. Um, but I would recommend looking on Google, trying to find the manual for the camera that you purchased, or looking on YouTube for a video of how to load film into your camera. In the PDF below, I've included um, a links to a few different videos that will help you load film into a few different cameras.